Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm not going to be making soap. I'm going to be making a mold. Well, it's sort of soap related. Anyway, this is the mold that I have been using. Basically, this is silicon rubber and I've got these molds here that I've made out of wood. That's the cavity that they are and they're actually down here. I'll show you this in just a minute, but this is what the end result turns out to be. However, because I'm pouring resin into here, it degrades the silicon really quickly. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but as you can see, they've got like little bubble holes and the silicon is starting to fall apart because I've used it so many times. And I'll show you what this is for. So this is the splitter that I use for my cold process soap. And these are the resin molds so that is that mold that piece there is that bit there and what happens is the wire comes up here over the top down the other side to the other one and when you push your soap through here that's what the wire cuts it at so these are really crucial for this whole build if i didn't have those this wouldn't work and i've got about six or seven of these ready to go uh, with the keys they just need the resin and i've gone through a few of these already and they degrade really quickly and there's nothing you can do about it because resin is so corrosive with silicon that's what i found with this silicon that i use anyway so i'm making another mold today and this is how i do it it's very simple these are made of wood i've put uh, resin over the top of them and then sanded them back lightly. Uh, normally they have little tiny grooves in each one of these, so the wire goes over the top, but I've decided this time just to make them uh, flat. So I filled those bits in, and then I just put some wood up around the edges, and I glued the inside so the silicon's not gonna leak out. And that's pretty much about it. So I'm just gonna make up some silicon, uh, add it to this cup, Add the catalyst with some mica so I know that the catalyst is actually mixed in with the silicon and then I'm going to pour it over the top. And usually it's set by the next day, but 24 hours later I'll take it out and I'll leave it out for about 12 hours and then I'll be able to pour my resin. And this mold will do um, two cavities each night. So it is a long process, but I figure if I make uh, two of these, back to back, then um, I can get two done every night because they take around about five days to cure just the resin itself. Because once you take the resin out after 24 hours after this mold, they're still very pliable. Like I can bend it like I could this and they're breakable too. It's almost like glass. So you've got to be really careful with it. It's got to sit on something flat for about five days and then you're ready to go. And I sand them down, make sure that they're nice and smooth and that they sit flush on the wood, so they're not gonna fall off onto the floor. And then they can be put with the splitter and sold online. So I think I've sold around about 40 or 50 of these splitters already in Australia. Uh, certainly very popular amongst soap makers, and uh, I just need to get these done. So I thought I'd take you along for the journey. So I'm gonna get some silicon, put my gloves on, and my glasses, and uh, Let's get to making some silicon. All right, so I've got my gloves on, got my glasses on. Whenever you're doing this stuff, you gotta protect yourself. Don't ever chance it. Okay, so this is the uh, mold making silicon rubber that I use. Um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can get it if you're in Australia. This is a fantastic seller. She is absolutely amazing with her support. So um, if you're in Australia, go and check her out. We want 180 grams from this. I think last time we did it was about 190, 180, 190. Uh, but when you add the catalyst too, it adds to the, the extra bit. So hopefully we've got it right. And while I'm on the subject of uh, messy, because that's what I'm doing, these paper towels really do come in handy. So if you're gonna do this, Make sure that you rip them off the, the paper towel lot first so that you don't have your sticky hands touching uh, everything. Like I can't pick up these pair of scissors now because my hands are so sticky. Okay, so this is the catalyst that comes with it. It's 
So we've added 180 grams, so we're going to add uh, three for the first hundred, and then we'll add one and a half. Three from the first one. So there's three mils. That's the first hundred, because it's 3%. And then the second one was 80, so it's really like two point something. So... I'll do that. I think with this particular one, if you do 2%, then it becomes uh, a little bit softer. And if you do 3%, then it becomes a solid. So I'm just gonna add this green mica. Not a lot of it, don't need a lot, but you need it to be able to be distinguished. When I mix the catalyst into the white, whatever's white still is not mixed in with the catalyst. So that's how you sort of know what you're mixing in. So if you mix, you keep mixing along and you keep seeing white, then the, uh, the silicon hasn't been mixed in properly. So I wish it would stay this color, but unfortunately it doesn't. Now I, I like to mix slowly with this so you just sort of mix it from the sides and I poke down the sides uh, and that way that lets all the catalyst sort of go sink towards the bottom and then just slowly stir it. So you can see there that there's a lot of uh, aqua color but there's also a lot of white. So all the aqua is already mixed in and the white has not. So I need it to be all aqua. Not one little bit of white because the white will just be normal silicon and it won't harden and it'll just be oozy. So once you sort of get to the bottom and you can pull that white to the surface, you can stop doing that. This is not done yet, don't get me wrong. And you get your next cup and then you tip this one into that one. So most of that's green, right? Or aqua, but there, I can see streaks of white in there as well. And while I'm pouring it into the second cup, it's also mixing and the bottom becomes the top and therefore it's easier to mix. So you can see all that's just all white. So I'm gonna keep mixing here. And do me a favor, if you like this video, smash the like button and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. What color would you have made it? Let me know in the comments below. Any color of the spectrum. You can only choose one though, because um, you can't have multicolor in here. So I'm hearing a lot of blues and pinks and things like that. I've done pinks in the past. They all turn out very pastel. And um, you got to take that into account too, that it's not going to turn out the color that you want or that you've made in soap. It's going to turn out to be very pastel. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I might just tip it back. Make sure we've got everything. It's very sticky, this stuff. The table keeps, like, I've got um, baking paper down the table and it keeps uh, moving because it's sticky. It's like slime. You know, the kids used to have those little slime balls. That's what it's like. I'm not too worried about bubbles in this because uh, there is a method to get rid of them. You can put it in like a chamber, but uh, what I do is I just pour it really slowly and that usually gets rid of all the bubbles or at least majority of them anyway. I'm 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. That's majority of that. Pretty much all of it, I think, is all gone to the aqua color, which is great, but it is starting to thicken up a bit, so I've got to hurry up a little bit more. Okay, so here we go. So you can see it's all one color now, nice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drip it slowly. I'm gonna start off in a corner. See how it's a nice long um, string that's flowing. That's what you want. Gets rid of all, most of the bubbles anyway. The big ones get popped on the way down. The small ones will still be there, but that's really not that bad. Once you've covered most of the, um, the sort of the corners and everything like that, it will sort of move into the rest of the, the, um, the design and sort of expand. And therefore you don't have to worry about getting into all the like all the little corners and stuff. It will just automatically do it. So once you go right around the edge and a little bit over the top, we'll do down here. Then you can just sort of pour it in over the top and not have to worry about anything else. You don't have to worry about the bubbles at that stage because it's already over, already over the top and it's not going to form anything else. So we'll just go over the top with a nice light string. This is how you want the, the silicon to be, very uh, liquidy, but still you know, to be fluid and you can move it. Um, the one that I did yesterday, I literally had to grab it and pull it out of the container. Uh, so this is uh, definitely a lot better today than it was yesterday. And I'm not wearing a mask, but if you're doing this kind of thing, you probably should because uh, it's not nice to breathe in. It's very... I won't say toxic, but it's very chemical. Okay, so we're over the top already. So now I don't have to worry about bubbles or anything. I can just pour it straight in and it will sort itself out. Because this will, the top will eventually be the bottom. So it's, it's not an issue. It's very, very messy. I don't recommend it if you don't like getting your hands dirty. And uh, if you do try and make silicon like this with the rubber, um, make sure that you've got either an assistant or you've got like an extra pair of gloves that you can grab. All right, so uh, I am gonna unmold this in the morning and I'll bring you with me and uh, we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so it's the next day and this is definitely set. I'm going to attempt to uh, remove all the wood. I'm just going to put the knife down the edge so it's a little bit easier to remove. Uh, we've got one side so I can peel it off from here. And there we go. We have our mold. It's not perfect, but it will do. So what I do from here is I just grab a, a tiny little pair of scissors and they got this little curve on them and it really helps. And I can just 
cut along this little bit. I just slide it actually, and it just cuts that lip off. And that way I can clean up the, the mold. So I think we're all done. So that is now the mold. The reason why I added this extra bit on here is because it just gives it that bit more stability. The back has to be flush, so it sits flush on the table. Otherwise, when you go to pour the resin into the cavities, there might be on an angle. So it really helps that the bottom is completely flush, which it is. So I've only just taken this out of the mold, so I'm going to leave it until tonight and then I'll pour the resin into it. Okay, so it's later on that night and I'm going to use my scales to um, measure out my resin so I can pour it into my mold. And because I've done this so many times, I know exactly how much to pour in here. There's two parts for the resin and one part for the hardener. This is the resin that I use. I'm going to leave a link in the description. So I'm going to set that back to zero and then I'm going to tip this cup into this cup to make sure that I've got the right amount. The second part to this is the hardener. I'm going to do 25 grams of this one. I like to put baking paper down just so I don't get a mess up on the table because once it goes hard it's really hard to get off. With the baking paper I can just throw it away. So I'm going to mix this in really well. Basically you stir until it's all clear, especially with this one because it's extra clear, but also once your hand starts to get sore. So about two to three minutes and then uh, you should see it starting to clear up. But if you're going to use this you should also scrape it off the sides and the bottom as well if you can. Okay, so I'm just going to scrape everything off the sides. This is looking good. See how it's nice and clear where before it was uh, opaque. I'm not too worried about the bubbles. What I have been doing, and I haven't heard too much about this um, online, but I've been using rubbing alcohol and uh, it acts exactly like it does with like melt and pour. Uh, pop the bubbles and then, you know, everything's fine, but it will just evaporate. All right, got you down nice and close to the, the silicon here. And uh, it's a beautiful green. It came out really well. It's nice and smooth. Uh, so it should do a really good job. So this is the resin and I'm just going to pour it in lightly. Now what I like to do is just pour a little bit initially in each side. So it fills, completely fills the bottom. Okay, and then grab my rubbing alcohol bottle and from a distance, just a couple of sprays. Now there's no bubbles on there at all. That is really crystal clear. So then I'm going to add some more. So that's pretty much done. You can see that there's a, a few bubbles that are sitting there and I don't want them there because they're hard to get rid of. So again, I'm just gonna get my bottle of rubbing alcohol and give it a light once over. That's great. I'll come back tomorrow and unmold this. So it's cured for the night, which means it's gone hard, but it's not to the point where you could use it. Uh, if the wire cut into it, it would probably slice it. So um, just going to pull it back. Oh, that's so satisfying. Because it's a new mold, it, it doesn't stick. The resin doesn't stick to the silicon just yet. And it just pops out nicely. So that's it. It's very bendable though. Like if I tried to bend that, I probably could. So I'll take this one out. Okay. Uh, that's a bit rough on that side. Um, but this side's nice and smooth. This is the top side. 
So this will now go and sit on the shelf and I'll make another one tonight and then I'll continue doing that same process until they're all done. And I know this is really boring. This is like a crucial part of the whole device. If I didn't have this, I couldn't really sell the other part. I hope you like the process of this and uh, I hope it inspires you to maybe work with some resin yourself. It does take a lot to get used to, but once you get like the right mold and the right patterns and the right templates, you can do anything you want. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.